I have a really cool tip to show you about cloning stuff in Fusion. Here we have a shot of a nice young lady working on a laptop, but in order to not promote a certain product, there's a sticker over this logo on the back of her laptop, which is great, except for maybe we don't want this sticker on the back of the laptop. Well, there's a few different ways that we can deal with this. If this were an image editing program and this were just a still, you could use a clone stamp and just kind of clone this out. And of course you can do something like that in Fusion with a paint node. So I grab the paint node here in the inspector, I'll grab this second apply mode, the clone mode. And up here in the upper left of my viewer, I'll select this fourth icon over just the single stroke. And now we can deal with this a lot like we normally would in an image editing program. So I hold down alt and click here to sample and then just kind of paint this out like this. And that would be a pretty reasonable way to deal with that if it were a still. But one problem is that as this moves around, it doesn't really work. So we can deal with this in another way. We could take a still frame of this clip. I'll hit shift spacebar to bring up my select tool palette here. And we can use a node called time speed. And anything that we run into this node will be affected by this speed and this delay. If we want to make a quick freeze frame, we just pick the frame that we're on 229 for our delay and set our speed to zero. And now we just have a freeze frame of this clip. Then we can run this into our paint node and do our normal paint out on that still. From there, generally what you would do is you'd grab something like a planar tracker and we'll just run this media in into the planar tracker and I'll bring up the planar tracker in our second viewer here and I'll go towards the end and we'll just select this area to track. I'll set our reference time under motion type, we'll say translation, rotation, and scale, and we'll track this backwards and it will track that motion. From there, we can create a planar transform. And what this will do is make a node that will transform anything we run through it so that it kind of sticks to this sticker here. So then we could do something like grab a merge node, run our original footage into the merge node, run our cloned still into the foreground, and then put that into our media out. So now we have this still image over our original footage. And we can put a mask on this merge to just limit that cloned image to be right over that sticker. And we could apply our motion for our planar transform both to the footage, and I'll copy and paste this, and to our mask. And now we have this sort of cloned out, but it's just kind of more problematic than you think it would be because the lighting changes a little bit and it's just maybe not the very best way to do this. Fortunately, there is an easier way to clone, I mean, just about anything uh, without using the clone stamp and making a still frame and all of that. Although that is a great way to deal with some shots, it doesn't work for all shots. So I'm gonna keep our planar transform. I'm gonna get rid of our other nodes here get rid of our tracker. So this planar transform is still just the tracking information from our sticker there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a transform node and run our original footage into that transform node. And we'll take our transform node and merge it over our original footage. So now basically nothing is happening. We have a transformed version of our footage that is being placed over our original footage, right? So I'll reset this transform. And what we're gonna do is use this to make a patch. So a patch is basically just like taking part of the image and kind of placing it over itself. There is a version of this, which is actually called Patch Replacer, which is pretty neat. All it does is take one piece of the image and it blends it with another piece of the image like this. And we can actually use this kind of thing for this. And it does a pretty good job, but there's a couple problems. One, when you move around, you have to animate this or put it on a tracker or something. And it's a little tricky to deal with that. The other thing is that this patch replacer is only in the paid version of Resolve. So it's a very nice little setup, but we can make our own version of this that just takes a patch from somewhere in the shot and places it over whatever we want to clone out just by using this transform. And we'll take maybe a polygon mask and put that on our merge. And let's take this polygon mask and we'll just draw a shape around our sticker like that. Then we can take this transform and we'll just move it over. What we're really doing is using this area of the laptop to kind of paste over this side of the laptop. And let's just maybe move it down a little bit just so it blends in pretty well. If we can get it to blend in decently without softening that mask at all, we're gonna be doing pretty good. And that works. If you're enjoying digging into Fusion a little bit deeper like this, I'd really recommend checking out our course, Pro Compositing in Fusion. We go through all the basics of doing visual effects and look at the best practices for making movie magic. There's a link down in the description or right there. If you wanna learn Fusion, this is the best way to do it. Okay, back to what we were doing. We do need to animate this mask so that it follows the motion of our sticker, which we can do just by applying our tracker to it. 
So I'll take this planar transform, throw it in between our polygon and our merge. And I put this on just some random frame. So we're gonna do it actually on the right frame. I'll go over here and remove our polygon one polyline because I have a keyframe here from where I originally drew this and I'm just gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna remove polygon polyline. That'll give me the same shape throughout the entire clip, but it's gonna follow that tracker. And now check this out. Without barely any work, it looks pretty good. Now we can see the edges here. Might be a little bit hard to see on the YouTube recording, but what we can do is in the upper right corner of our viewer, we can look at this menu and go down to gain gamma. And what this will do is adjust the gain and gamma of just the viewer. So this isn't actually color correcting the image, it's just color correcting this view. And so we can see what things look like if the gain is pushed up or pushed down. You can see what it looks like at a higher or lower gamma. And so we can kind of adjust this a little bit to where maybe you can see this shape a little better on the YouTube recording. And we can also really just see if there are any differences or anything that we've kind of missed. Take this transform and just move this over just a touch. And as we scrub through this footage here, we can get a pretty good idea of how well this works. And honestly, it does a pretty good job. Now, why does this do such a good job? Well, we're taking this patch from something that has essentially the same motion as what we are trying to repair here. This part of the laptop is going to move in a very, very similar way to this part of the laptop. It's not like it's kind of sliding under this patch or anything. If we were to use a different part of the image, for instance, if I were to move this down here, right to the window, it's going to slit. Like it's gonna look like there's a hole in the laptop, right? So we don't wanna do that. We just wanna use something that has the same motion. And then once this looks pretty good, we can take this polygon mask and I'll just push up the soft edge a little bit, push it up enough to where it softens it without it going totally crazy. Maybe make this a little bigger if we have some room, adjust this on the sides a little bit. And now because this is soft, it's a lot harder to see the difference here. I have this gain and gamma adjusted to where it's easier to see this, but normally if we don't have the gain and gamma on, I mean, you can barely tell. Like there's a little bit you can sort of tell but we might be able to even just grab this transform and add a color correction node. I can do something like take the gain up and just kind of blend this in a little more to be exactly where we want it to be. And because it sticks really well, it's pretty unlikely that you're even gonna see that patch there, but you can spend some more time color correcting it and that kind of thing. Maybe take the gamma down just a touch. We can even kind of animate it. So at this part of the shot, it looks great. I'll animate gain, lift, and gamma. This side, it's gonna look a little different, but we'll adjust the gain, lift, and gamma to be a lot closer to what it was. Now it'll kind of animate in between that, and you'll have a little better patch. Of course, the softer you make this, the better, as long as you're not making it too soft where you see like ghosting of things. Like this would be too soft, but as soft as you can make it, really nice. You can just bring this out a little bit. And now we've pretty much erased this sticker from the laptop. And we didn't have to mess around with the clone brush or anything like that. All we're doing is just taking a patch and putting it there. And because the motion is similar, it does a great job of not only matching the motion, but also matching the grain. It looks totally natural. Everything looks how it should. And now we have a really good result. Getting rid of that sticker, that also obviously works for the real logo or whatever you wanna do. And what's cool is this same technique works surprisingly well for anything that has kind of similar motion in it. For instance, we could do kind of a similar technique here to get rid of this little kind of clip thing, transform, take our original footage, merge it over, make a mask, and we'll just draw a little mask here. And kind of move this up like this, take the size down just a touch to where it matches pretty well. We'll just soften that edge, take this gain down just a touch. And now we fix this patch as well. And it would be the same thing, just tracking this forward and backward, making a planar transform and putting this on our mask and it's gone. I mean with very, very little work and surprisingly good results. So definitely recommend this technique if you need to clone things. I hope it's helpful. So there's a nice way to clone things in Fusion using the patch technique. I hope you enjoyed that, because I enjoyed that. I enjoy you. Hey, make sure to check out that course if you're into Fusion or want to be into Fusion. Hey, that almost sounds like a cool thing. If you were an into Fusion, it almost sounds like infusion. Ooh, an infusion. Hmm.